lo- you just love him so much. You know, that, that we're trying to reclaim that. Okay, guys, we are going to start with chapter one. How exciting is this? Okay, so sit on the edge of your seat. We want to maximize our own happiness and our potential in our life. And that's what we're going to be doing here. Here we go. Okay, chapter one, the quest. I was raised to be a corporate executive. And this is true, actually. (laughs) In the new era of equality, when asked what I wanted to be when I grew up, the bolder the dream, the greater the praise. And yet, for all the talk about choice, and self-determination conspicuously absent from the choice box was the option to make my husband the top priority of my life. That politically incorrect answer would have landed me in the dustbin of history, never to be heard from again. And so it was, I spent my formative years polishing my resume, Bachelor of Arts in Economics. Oh, this is embarrassing. Do I have to read this? Okay, Sari, help! A Bachelor of Art in Economics with distinction, Dean's List, Honor Roll, Vice President, I'm just gonna get this quickly, a Vice President of Economics, Honor Society. I waltzed into my first job interview as a broker, puffed up, only to be sent to the elevator with the admonition, there's nothing on your resume that shows us that you can do this job. I left thoroughly dejected. When I got home, you can follow along if you have, we're on page, oh, this doesn't have a page, (laughs) the quest. Okay, when I got home, I tore my resume into little pieces, uh, into little bits, into an envelope and mailed them back with a note. The only thing that's important is that I have the determination to to succeed. This story was told as I was called to the lectern to receive a broker of the year award. In less than a year, I had amassed the second largest portfolio at the firm of 400 brokers, 397 of them men. Okay, so it's me and 397 guys, three women. Okay, standing there at the ripe old age of 23, I was holding that brass ring, the ultimate prize, clutching it rather tightly, actually, and the lack of fulfillment and purpose was earth shattering. Perhaps if I had never risen to such heights, I would have always thought that when I finally attained such success, then I would be fulfilled. I might have spent my entire life grasping and hoping, waiting for the day when I finally achieved my dreams. But at that moment, it was clear to me that I had been sold a bill of goods, that my professional success was everything. To my horror, That lie was now laid bare. Now we're going on to the next next section. You guys doing okay? Everyone's good? Yeah, nods. Okay, fine. Okay. (laughs) Fists in the air. At that moment, my existential angst was profound. What was my purpose in life? Without the goal of business accomplishment, where would I find meaning? I still had a job, but my mind had shifted from being a career woman to simply having a career. I knew knew that there had to be more to life. Thus began my spiritual journey. I began attending various Jewish classes and events. Eventually, I ended up in a class in which the rabbi's deep Torah wisdom resonated with me. He said things I'd never heard before, and yet it felt like he was merely putting words to deep truths I had known all along. At the end of that very first class, it's so funny. I remember this like it was yesterday. I asked the rabbi, oh, that's not in the book. Can I say things that are not in the book? Is that okay? Add my uh, little uh, two cents here. Um, I asked the rabbi why everything sounded so familiar. He responded that I had already learned it all in the womb. That answer, which seemed so odd, seemed so odd to me at the time, didn't prevent me from coming back and learning with that rabbi for many years afterwards and reading reading as much Torah literature as I could get my hands on. Meanwhile, I met my husband and the very first Orthodox wedding I ever went to was my own. We followed the Torah's ways with full hearts. However, I still fully bought into the modern way of thinking that a marriage based on equality was the new gold standard. Okay, you listeners, are you guys coming up with your questions? Okay, they're nodding. Okay, good. Because we're, we're going to break in a second and we're going to take live questions. Um, was the new gold standard. Having been raised on the catchwords of choice, equality, and fairness, my fists were raised, still raised high in the air. 
I was indoctrinated that all chores should be divided 50-50. Newly married, I asked my husband, since we both work full time, would you prefer to cook Mondays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays? As this idea was not very appealing, he suggested that we cater in our dinners, which is precisely what we did, much to my satisfaction. But little did I know, as we will come to see, that fairness has little to do with happiness in marriage. I'm no stranger to operating boldly, boldly in the arena for which I was bred. I considered myself to be part of a team that, was, that help, has helped women to stand strong against the prevailing male headwind. In the workplace, I've come to adapt, as every woman does, to the changing roles and power plays that the ever dynamic business world throws at us. What has been much harder, what has been the much harder road to navigate, the one that I still grapple with every single day, it's true, okay, is at what point does a corporate executive lay down her weapons and become an adoring wife? Or an even better question, is becoming an adoring wife a valuable goal to aspire to in the first place? Obvious to anyone who has been married for more than 10 minutes, the well-honed persona that is necessary that is a necessary requirement in the marketplace is best checked at the door, at the front door, if a marriage is to survive, much less thrive. I realize that I cannot march forth weapons drawn and expect a good outcome. With all the grand vision of a world of equality, I knew I could be anything I wanted to be, do anything I wanted to do. This newfound freedom was exhilarating. But Oh yeah, got one more paragraph and then we're taking questions. But when I was knee deep in battlefront tactics or strutting with glory at my business prowess, it was, yeah, it closed a huge deal, hello, okay. It was nearly impossible to act the part of the doting wife. In fact, it actually felt downright degrading to do so. The fallout from the new world we were trying to create had ramifications far into the future that we never anticipate, anticipated. And then we're talking about zero clarity is coming up next, but I am taking questions. You, you guys, you're on. Okay, Sarit. Okay, Take so um, yeah, so here's, first the name, here's the book. Let me just tell everybody, Leah Richheimer, Marriage Secrets, okay? With a forward by Rabbi Pesach. Okay, fine. Okay, okay I'm so taking the glasses off. See me? You it was, me yeah. Yeah. Okay, Sarit. <laughs> Very, 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 actually very interesting. I love the way you read. So you can come and read me bedtime stories anytime you want. Um, you have a very nice reading voice. It's very, um, it's very pleasing to listen to. Um, stop, but, stop, stop, stop. Yes. <laughs> okay, no, go ahead. <laughs> Hello, this is, this is what, isn't this like uh, soliciting comp uh, appreciation? Uh, We're not going to talk about that, but I'm giving them okay, a Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> Chapter three. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, good. Um, no, so, so. Um, so the first question coming in is, I don't know what year you wrote your book, but the work environment you face then would never happen today. How do women in today's world make the doting wife a positive role model? Oh, that's a good question. And by the way, doting wife is kind of like, I don't want to be a doting wife. Okay, I, I get that. So it's, it's I, you want the, the whole thing about doting wife is that sense that a woman has like, her husband walks in the room like, like, I guess when you first meet, when you first get, when you're engaged or in the anchor, when you're like totally infatuated and he walks through, you're like, oh, you know, that feeling and that feeling like disappears as soon as he leaves the socks on the pillow. And as soon as like the dishes, like never go into the sink, like how could hard, he's standing up and he's walking right by the sink. Like how hard would it be to actually take a dish with him and put it in the sink? Okay. So to, that sense of adoration and respect and, and, and that's the wrong word. Let me just think of a better word. What's good from doting, do, like adoring, um, just, just that feeling of just like, I just, like you just want to, um, you just love him so much, you know, that, that we're trying to reclaim that. Why? Because it gives us more joy and because it, 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 it creates a satisfaction in our own life. It's just, it's just a happy thing. Why are we doing without that when it's right there? It's so available to us. And the turning point, and if, to answer the question here is that it's, 
you know, I don't care how you are in the workplace and, you know, like that would never happen in these, in this era. And that's probably, thank God, you know, maybe because I'm, I and other women, we're all together and turning the tide there. That's great. It, at home, it's a different story. Like I totally, you know, people ask me, are you an anti-feminist? I was like, oh my gosh, no, like, hello, that gave me so many choices. Okay. However, however, the point is the, the equality is such a crucial thing in the workplace. It's like, I'm, we should be ashamed that we're, we earn 67 cents to their dollar. Like this is horrible. Equality in the workplace is worth fighting for. Equality is the wrong measure for a home. That's the issue. It's the wrong measure. It's the, the it's the pathway to disaster. <laughs> you know, uh, first of all, why would a woman want to be equal to a man when she's superior? <laughs> Wait, don't don't let the guy see that. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get in big trouble. But right, like so, the thing equal. It's the wrong measure. The measure in a home is shalom. We're going to get into it and how to measure it and how to create that in your home. But that's the wrong measure. So I don't care what is going on in the world, whether you know, my, my circumstance would have changed and now it would never happen or whatever. Women have to understand, yes, fight for equality in the workplace. It's very crucial, very important at home. Leave that behind and walk in the door. And I, I want to say, make yourself happy, but make your husband happy and you'll be happy. I, this, look, you don't know me. <laughs> or maybe, maybe some of you do may know, know me, but, but, um, or watch me for a long time, but you just have to understand these are the kinds of things you have to try this at home. Like I can say something, right? And you're like, well, what kind of crazy, whatever. These are, it's based on 3000 year old track record, bulletproof track record that actually works. So this is all stuff from 3000 year old track record. It's, it's from the Torah. It's got two, you know, there's 220 Torah sources here, but there's thousands more. You find them, you write a book on marriage because when this information will bring you to that sense of satisfaction and joy in your life every time. And it's guaranteed. God said, if you take, if you take, make your husband happy and put your efforts into that, you will be happy. You, all of the blessings that you, his, the Shekhinah, the light of Torah, the light, God's light will come into your home and bless all the things in the dishwasher that doesn't work. And the, you know, and your, your pencil stub breaks, you know, and the sharpener doesn't work. The sharpener will work all the things in your life with it. Again, not my idea. All the things in your life will be brought, will, will be um, uh, blessed. If you make Shalom bias peace in the home, the number one priority of your life. Okay, good. Let's take the next question. Wow. So um, firstly, before we take the next question, um, Elana said, thank you, Leah, for sharing your story. It's so inspiring to know that a woman so successful in the business world can still choose to make her hubby and family life the top priority. That's great. Okay. And it's true. It's, yay, it's nice. Yay. I'm not the uh, only one. I'm not the only one. Okay. No, but, but you know what? But, but I found so, to me, it, it was such a... Um, um, such a moment, such a realization to realize that when you said doting wife, it sort of felt like Stepfordy wife, like with the apron, you know, preparing the, you know, baby. Barefoot the, and pregnant, the, yes, we right, are. Right, 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 right. Which is so which is so bad because doting should be what you want to aspire to. But I think that we've all, we have this, even from when we were young, we have this idea of women having to prove themselves and, and, and show their power and be powerful. And I think you said that when you read that that's sort of when you were growing up, your aspirations was to be this successful businesswoman. And none of us are aspiring to be the successful wife. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's like, it, it, we were so where it was like, oh yes, now you have a choice. Do you want to be a doctor or a lawyer? You know, I was like, no, actually, I want to be a, a loving, I, I want to be a wife, you know, whatever. That wasn't one of the choice boxes. You were like in the dustbin of history if you were to choose that, which is sad. It's kind of like, you know, we, a whole, you know, the history of what a woman, you know, what her satisfaction, a woman gets a lot of satisfaction from work. And so, in fact, I have a lot of women who, who get more satisfaction and more praise and whatever and accolades than from cleaning a diaper, you know? So <coughs> yeah. Okay, good. Okay. What's the next question? Yeah. So so the next one, and it's funny, this is actually would be my question, but Leora says, I guess if I'm an alpha style male and my husband is more of a milder, softer person, we can make it work too. And she's asking it because it, I, I feel like that's my sort of idea. Like I'm very strong. So, and my husband has a lot of those um, much, he's more sensitive and he's more intuitive and he has a lot of the qualities that you would think would be more natural to a woman. Um, and I find that well, that's why it makes it so hard for me sometimes because I'm not sure I understand the question. 
I mean, what, I, what's I, the problem I, with that? That's wonderful. Meaning, no, no, but me not, but not necessarily because it's really because the job is on me to make it work because I'm reading your book. It's not coming from the man, right? So I'm the one who has to make the work, but at the same token, I'm the stronger, more dominant sort of personality, and I have to now learn how to, you know, I'm saying it. No, I don't understand a, why a, you can't just be who you are. But then, but then am I really ever going to be that doting wife if I oh, have to I be in control? Okay, so if goal. I have to be in control, you know, if I have to be the male in the relationship? So I, I think doting is the wrong goal, right? Adoring, you know, and your husband should also adore you. This isn't, this isn't a mutually exclusive thing. He should dote on you and adore you. And, you know, that all should be, it, that should be a mutual we can't work on what our husband should do or what he could do or, you know, whatever. All we can do is be the best half to him. And then hopefully it's reciprocated, which a 99% chance is unless there's abuse and there's, you know, all kinds of psychological things. And then you need to go get professional help to help, uh, deal with that kind of a thing. But, but in, in any circumstance where a wife ups her game and becomes a better person and improves her own character traits, her own midos, and she becomes a better person, it will for sure that you're, you're one soul, you and your husband. The point is that a woman can bring out the best in her husband or she can bring out the worst, you know, you choose. So the issue is that you have to figure out for yourself uh, you know, what the personality types are. And it's not a question of control and not control. And, you know, a woman, you know, we've been also sold a bill of goods that, that control is the pinnacle, that we want to have control. Control is a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's like when there's something far, far more important Look, if, if for a woman. For a man, they need control. That's it. They, they, if they feel like they don't have control, they start grabbing it and being bossy and controlling. And, you know, it's horrible when a man who, who doesn't have control, it, it, it's very horrible to watch. A woman thinks she needs control. And we've been taught by society that we need control. However, there's something that is a million times, not a hundred or a thousand or a hundred, a million times more important to a woman is connection. That is more important to a woman than any control ever. She wants to feel connected to her husband, to her relationship, to her kids, to her family. She wants to feel connected. And we've been sold that, no, you got to have control like a guy. And so we grab the control away from her husband. He is left literally lying in the gutter, okay, because he doesn't have what he needs more than anything, okay? And I'm not saying that you now give him control and okay, oh yes, let's buy uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, I don't know, the, I, I don't want to insult any car manufacturer. So let's buy the stupid little car that keeps breaking down instead of buying the one that has a good track record because you want to have control. No, a woman has, you know, has a, an opinion and must state that opinion, but in the softest manner possible. Why? So her husband still feels like he has control and he does have ultimate control. If he wants to buy the stupid little car that's the wrong brand and the wrong, has a horrible track record, it's a lemon, or whatever, you know, it, because she, um, she uh, gave him the control, she gave her opinion, he didn't take it and he went and bought that and the car kept breaking down. Maybe he'll learn next time to listen better, but because he had control, the blessing came into the home. Are you hearing this? This is hard to hear for a mo modern woman, okay? I'm telling you, try this one time between now and next week's show, okay? Try it one time to let go and let your husband make a, a decision that you don't agree with and just take a deep breath and let him have control and you'll see the connection immediately. Like you, you suddenly feel all happy and you won't know why it's because you've got connection, which you need way more than you need, to get, need control. Okay. There's the answer though. Let's go to the next question. Yeah. By the way, you actually, I think even in your answer answered even more of the questions that were coming in about how does someone shift from that role? Meaning, because if someone is used to being the more, the stronger one and their husband is sort of the more like going with the flow and, and they're the ones that have that. How did they then become, do the opposite, but you sort you sort of answered that in terms yes, of- Yes, well also a woman has to understand that there's a, um, uh, 
women feel like they're giving up their power by doing this. It's not that at all. Women have backdoor influencer, uh, 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 you know, look, when a woman, I, I work with thousands and thousands of women and I will tell them to say, oh, oh, he can't even change your diaper, right? He can't, even, I can't respect him on anything he does. I mean, you know, like, are you joking? If I gave him any control, look, the house would fall apart. I'm like, take it slow, <laughs> take a deep breath. You try it a little bit here and a little there and a little there. And within literally, I was going to say weeks, but let's give her months. Okay. Within months, the husband is more capable. It, it, she, it starts bringing out the best in him. And the wife comes, you know, when I give these long courses, or whatever, and she, she'll come back and she'll, or I'll get an email or something, you know, and she'll come back. When I used to give these long, you know, where I saw people um, every week for, for months, um, you know, the women are like, you could, like, if you took a picture of them when they first walked in the first class, they're like, yeah, whatever. Now you take, you know, by, by like class number, you know, nine or something like that, they walk in, you know, they've got the notebook out and they're all ready and they're smiling like from ear to ear. Like, is that because I'm so smart? No, it's because God created us. And then he told us exactly what to do to make ourselves the happiest. And he didn't hide it from us. Okay. And so we're going to go through that step by step right here. Okay, go ahead, Sarit. Wow. So, um, so firstly, it's um, Justin actually says, I always like to have control. So it's scary not having it. And I think that a lot of women feel that way. So especially today. So I think it's going to be good to go through this and actually get to that. And, and there's right, you have a whole chapter about control. So I think that's yeah, we're going to get to control. It, it is a hard thing. And frankly, to be honest with you, it's not the thing that you should start with. Like I've got some other really great uh, um, uh, things that you can work on that will give you instant result. That's something that takes a woman time to understand. And the thing about giving up control is there has to be a, she it has to be absolutely clear to a woman that she has, you know, it, it has to be obvious to her. You know what I'm saying? It has to be, she has to see what's in, what with him. What is it? W, uh, what's in it for me? <laughs> you know, if a woman doesn't see that, she can't work on this. So we're going to get to the with of what, what, what's in it for you, what you're going to gain from it. Just take my word for it right now that like, there's just a level of joy and satisfaction in your life and connection in your life that you don't, you know, may, may not have accessed at, 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 to this thus far in your life. Um, so that's very exciting. But again, that wouldn't be the first thing I, I would start with. In fact, let me, I think we're out of time. So I'm just going to give our homework for the week. Okay. And this is what everybody needs to do this week. I know I just gave you homework, but I'm going to the back of this, right at the, the back of everything. Every chapter is a whole homework thing. You think I would have thought ahead and like marked it. Okay. <laughs> try this week, try one time not to interrupt your husband while he's speaking. Okay. This is a level of control and, and uh, uh, it, this is a homework for bonding and getting closer. And it's so funny. I gave this, I remember this is maybe eight years ago. So it was a long time that I still remember exactly what she said. Yeah. I gave this homework and the woman came back and she said, Leia, I had the most depressing week. I'm like, why? And she said, I realized my husband cannot get out one sentence without me interrupting him. She said, I, I was heart sick. I was heart sick. Like I, I'm just basically, you know, taking a baseball bat and banging him all day long. And I'm wondering why, how come he doesn't meet my needs? How come he doesn't understand me? How come he doesn't listen to me? And I'm like, oh my gosh, here's the thing. You're doing that homework this week. You are, um, you, if you, if you're uh, want to take a next advance, then do the other homework I gave before, which is to try and not control, but let's start simple, easy, and then you can witness with your own eyes, your husband getting closer to you every moment. Okay, this is Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show. We'll see you next time.